Hi, it's Ann Taylor Pittman from Cooking Light. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm sharing a really great idea for a meatless Monday dinner or a weekday lunch, um, whatever you choose. It's a healthy whole grain bowl made with roasted cauliflower. And I keep forgetting the title, so let me read it off to you. The title of the recipe is Crispy Cauliflower with Chili Tahini Sauce and Farro Pilaf, which is a mouthful, but it's basically at its core a whole grain bowl that you'll feel really good about eating. It's very filling and satisfying, and it features roasted cauliflower. So we need five cups of cauliflower florets. I've already cut about four cups of florets, and I want to cut um, some more here to show you a great tip about roasting cauliflower. So um, what I've done here, this is a head of cauliflower that I've started cutting on. Um, a big chunk sort of fell off. But what the tip I'm going to give you is, whenever possible, if you like browned, crispy edges on your cauliflower, try to cut slabs that have flat surfaces. Flat, um, the more sort of flat surface area you can create, the more browning you'll get on your cauliflower because it's going to make direct contact with the pan. Now, you can't help but uh, have some parts where the florets are kind of curved. That's fine. But on the other side, I do have that nice flat edge that I can use to, again, make as much contact with the hot pan as possible. Okay, so I have some more florets kind of coming off here. You know, how, you know how cauliflower is. It just starts sort of separating itself. But what I'm doing is I'm just going to cut down, again, to create some flat surfaces here um, for my cauliflower. You'll see what it looks like in a minute because I have some that I already made ahead. So we want five cups. Um, if you're not a huge fan of cauliflower, you could certainly use broccoli. That would work really well here, or Brussels sprouts. Any sort of cruciferous fall vegetable feels um, really appropriate for this um, whole grain bowl. OK, let me cut just a little bit more. OK, so that's about five cups of cauliflower. That's going to go into a 425 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Now after, you're going to put it in and after 15 minutes, you want to flip your cauliflower pieces over. Okay, let me get this going. So I have my five cups of flo chopped florets. I need about a tablespoon of olive oil and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Again, this is going to go in a 425 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. I tend to go more on the 30 minute end of things because I like a lot of browning. Um, but just check it. 425 for 15 minutes, take it out of the oven, flip the pieces over, and see how they're doing. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just turning so that some of those nice flat edges um, are against flat against the pan. Okay. So that's going to go into the oven. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. OK, so I have one here that I made earlier. So nice roasted cauliflower. You see where the, we had the flat edges, how there are some nice browned pieces, some good browning um, where the cauliflower made contact with the pan. The brown parts equal flavor. So that's why I love those so much. And that's why I try to promote uh, as much browning as possible. You can also preheat your um, your pan. We don't call for that in the recipe, but if you want to get like really nice crispy edges, you can also pop your um, sheet pan in the oven as it's preheating, get it nice and hot, and then carefully arrange your cauliflower on the pan. Okay, so let me get to the whole grain. Some farro here that are pre-cooked. It's three cups of cooked farro. Uh, farro is a type in um, an ancient grain. It's a strain of wheat. You could use a gluten-free grain if, um, if you would like to go gluten-free, uh, something like quinoa or I love sorghum. It's a little harder to find, takes a little longer to cook, but that would be delicious as well. I'm using um, farro here. To get three cups of cooked grains, usually it takes between one to one and a quarter cups of dried grains. You could also find now, in a lot of places, you can find pre-cooked farro. Um, so it's already cooked. It's in those um, bags um, near the pre-cooked rice in the grocery store. 
and just look for one that doesn't have a lot of added salt or flavorings because we want to add our own flavor and we want to keep the sodium down. Okay, so I'm going to make a pilaf here. Um, again, I have my farro already cooked. I'm going to add a little olive oil to the skillet and some shallots. So this is just three tablespoons of shallots. That's about one medium-ish sized shallot. That's an official size, medium-ish. So if you're just tuning in, I'm making a roasted cauliflower grain bowl. It's great for Meatless Monday. It also is really delicious at room temperature, so it's a great option for meal prep. If you wanna make this for your lunches, you can portion it out and have yourself set up with four lunches to get you through the rest of the week. And we have a quick question. Great. So when you see, we're starting to see different colors of cauliflower in the market. Yes. Are those any different? Are that is a great different? question. Um, so the different colored cauliflower is, uh, the color comes from some of the properties in the soil in which the cauliflower is grown. So there are different antioxidants that are present. That's what gives the cauliflower, say, its purple color or its yellow color. I don't know off the top of my head what those antioxidants are, um, but I'm guessing, you know, if it's yellow, well, I'm not even going to guess because I, I might be wrong. But we can look it up <laughs> and let you know. Um, Taste-wise, they're going to taste exactly like traditional white cauliflower. Um, but the color is going to give you a little bit of a different nutrition profile. That's a great question. Okay, while that's going, I have two dates here. I'm using medjool dates. I love those. They are very sort of meaty and, and big. These have pits in them, so uh, I like the ones that are not pre-pitted. They, they just seem to be um, more caramel rich and moist inside. I'm going to add my farro here. So my shallots are starting to get a little browned. I'm just sort of reheating this. If you're making a batch of farro or another uh, whole grain that might take a little bit of time to cook, why not go ahead and make a big batch, portion it out, and either refrigerate it for the week or freeze it for a couple of months. That way you have cooked grains on hand. Um, if they're refrigerated, you can just reheat them. If they're frozen, you can thaw them in the microwave pretty quickly and use them for easy, fast, healthy meals throughout the week. Okay, so these are nice and sort of sticky, which I love. I mean, they really do taste kind of like caramel. They're just going to give a little bit of an extra flavor dimension. I know that's kind of vague, but um, they really do just kind of enhance the flavor of the pilaf. So, and another question, if you don't have dates or you can't find them for some reason, is there something else you could sub in there? Absolutely. So the dates, you know, they're just kind of bringing a different flavor component here. We have earthy nuttiness from the whole grains. We have that little bit of allium bite from the shallots. So we just want a little bit of caramel sweetness. It's not going to be quite the same, but you could use raisins. I would chop them up um, a little bit. Uh, either golden raisins or traditional brown raisins. You could also use currants if you have those. Any dried fruit, really. Um, it will be a little bit of a different flavor profile, but you could use chopped dried apricots. Those are gonna taste a little brighter and sunnier um, than these dates do, but you could use those as well. Um, prunes, if you're a prune fan, I am a prune fan. Those would be delicious here too. Isaac so wants to know, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Isaac wants to know, can he use cranberries? Oh, yes, cranberries would be great. Yes, cranberries, dried cherries, anything like that would be great here. You just want a little bit of a pop, which is kind of nice here. The little bit of sweetness is unexpected um, and just really sort of enhances the dish. Okay, so I pitted my dates. I got those in. I'm going to add a little salt. Half a teaspoon of salt here. for the pilaf. Now, if you are using a pre-cooked farro or another pre-cooked whole grain and you see that it's already flavored, hold off on the salt. Just don't, you know, taste it, see if it tastes salty enough. If it doesn't need the salt, then definitely don't add it or your sodium may just um, skyrocket. Okay, let me set that aside for just a second and pull together the dressing, the sauce. Okay, 
So the sauce is based on tahini, which is sort of a darling ingredient right now, um, a favorite ingredient for so many people. It is sesame seed paste, basically like a nut butter. It's usually a little thinner than a nut butter. So I have one and a half tablespoons of that here. And I need a little bit of lemon juice and lemon zest. I need one teaspoon of lemon zest. For me, um, I usually don't measure lemon zest. I just say, <laughs> honestly, even for a medium-sized lemon, I, I just say one lemon equals about one teaspoon of zest. So I like to zest my lemons this way as opposed to this way, um, just because I feel like I have better control over avoiding the bitter white pith. I feel like I'm better able to control by running the blade over this way. You do you, you do your lemon zest however you want. I have been made fun of though by doing it this way. Just so you know. Uh, let's don't make fun of each other for stuff like that. You do it however you want. Okay, I need two tablespoons of lemon juice. And depending on how juicy these lemons are, I may get two tablespoons or I may not. Let me just see. I'm pulling out the big seeds. What I do is I hold the lemon up like this so that when I squeeze, hopefully any other seeds that are in there don't fall out. They sort of stay in the lemon and don't get into my bowl. I'm not measuring. I am just estimating, but I will taste this and see. It's not critical if you get just a little bit more or a little bit less lemon juice. If it tastes good to you, then uh, you're good to go. Okay, so I have my lemon zest, my lemon juice in here with the tahini. Now the tahini is going to start to seize. That's what it does when liquid hits it. It starts to seize up and thicken. Don't worry, we're gonna add some water that will thin it out and we will be good. So I'm gonna add a tablespoon of water. A tablespoon is three teaspoons. And see where that gets us. And then I can always add in a little more water as needed. So that's the thing, like if you are making a dressing with tahini and it starts to seize up like that, don't worry, just add some water and it will thin out. Okay, I do think I want it maybe just a little bit thinner than that. So try another teaspoon. I'm gonna add in the rest of my salt, that's a quarter teaspoon. And then a half teaspoon of chili powder, just regular old chili powder, and a half teaspoon of sugar. The sugar is going to balance the flavors. Um, tahini is, actually has quite a bit of bitterness on the back end, so that sugar is just going to kind of round it out and create a very well-balanced sauce. Almost like if you make vinaigrette, a lot of times you add maybe a little, a little teeny bit of honey uh, to balance the flavors. That's kind of what we're doing here with sugar. Okay, so there's my dressing. Lovely. Now it's time to kind of put everything together. So this was super easy. You just roast some cauliflower, you make a dressing, you heat up some farro. If you have pre-cooked farro, it's really easy to put together. If not, it's okay. It doesn't take that long to cook it. Again, you could use a gluten-free grain if you'd like, like um, uh, quinoa or sorghum. Um, and that will uh, keep you gluten-free if you need to go that way. Okay, sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Okay, so to put these together, I'm just gonna put some farro in a bowl. Again, this is that wonderful farro that we flavored with some sauteed shallots and some chopped dates. If you wanna throw some herbs in here, by all means, uh, go ahead, that would be delicious. Thyme is my jam. I uh, put thyme in just about everything. That would be delicious here. Parsley would be wonderful. This makes four servings. I'm just going to dish up two to give you a sense of how it goes. Okay, this lovely roasted cauliflower goes on top. Again, this is wonderful at room temperature, so it's a great thing to portion up and pack up for lunches for the week. And we have a quick question. Great. Can you use frozen cauliflower for this? That is a really good question. For a dish like this, where I think you want the integrity of the vegetable to stay intact, you want to get those browned edges, you want it to have a little bit of crispness to it, I would advise not using frozen cauliflower in that case. It's just never going to get quite as brown and crisp as this does. 
Um, I love frozen vegetables for, for so many things, but in a recipe like this, just know you're not gonna get the same sort of browning um, and the same sort of flavor depth that comes from that browning. Um, so I would say try to go with fresh. Great question. Okay, so let me just drizzle on some of this lovely sauce here, the tahini based sauce. If you don't have tahini on hand, but you do have cashew butter or peanut butter or almond butter, that would work here too. It's a nut butter. Um, the idea is to get some sort of richness and body in the sauce as well as that nice nutty flavor. So those would work as well. So there you go. Great for Meatless Monday um, or lunches to pack up for the week. Again, I can't remember this recipe title. It is crispy cauliflower with chili tahini sauce and farro pilaf. Great, easy meal to put together. Thank you so much for joining today. I hope I gave you some tips that you can use in your kitchen. If you are watching on Facebook, please like and share this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe so you'll get notifications when we go live. So we will be actually pre-recorded next Monday, but please still tune in. We'll go up at noon on next Monday. I'm sharing a great easy recipe for entertaining. And then I'll see you back live on the 15th. Thanks so much. Thank you.